So today we will understand deeply. You have to, here comes Charlie. So we have to understand this impurity of the mind clearly. And once we understand this impurity of the mind, <clears throat> like, you know, the faucet is closed, the water is not coming, you invite the plumber, and then the plumber examines and it says, oh, here are the five problems. Similarly, the mind, once we understand what causes the impurity of the mind and why purity of the mind is required in the journey of the self-discovery, otherwise also, if we have a purity of the mind, we, if we have the purity of the mind, we don't have uh, strong likes and dislikes mind. We don't have an absent mind. We don't have a mood swing mind. We don't have a biased mind. We don't have sheep mind. We don't have money mind. We don't have monkey mind. We don't have angry mind. It is a lifelong journey. If we think, oh, I have understood it, it is not going to work that way. Why? Let us understand it clearly. <clears throat> First step, the past impressions. I have been angry and upset and stressed and entered into strong likes and dislikes. How many times? Trillions of times. Until today. We all have undergone. The, so those impressions are already accumulated as a storehouse in the mind. They take the form of a tendencies. And that is what we say the storehouse of the impressions are present due to the current or the past life. There are some soft corner of every individual. Means what? John knows about Sophie, Sophie knows about John. So they will not touch the soft corner if they don't want to enter into any conflict. But that soft corner is based on the past impression. Oh, don't, don't, don't say this. Don't talk about this. Otherwise, he will be upset or she will be upset. So it means those impressions, we are not aware. They are, but they are present in us. They are already present in us. First, first thing. Now the second part. Because of those impressions, we use the word sankalpa in Sanskrit. Sankalpa means imagined or projected happiness or pain in the world. Based on those impressions, my mind imagines or projects either Happiness or running. Oh, don't talk to that guy. You know, he is, he will make you upset. He is a crazy guy. You see, this is imagined and projected pain or the pleasure. Did you get it? Two, two points. First, past impressions. They are the tendencies. They are always present in our mind. <coughs> second part, second step. Now the mind has an imagined <clears throat> or projected peace or happiness, pain or pleasure, likes or dislikes. I have projected pasta is good. In this restaurant, this pasta is very tasty. So my mind repeats it a couple of times. It is an imagined happiness. It is a projected happiness. So when the mind repeats, the third step comes. What is the third point? Desired. Now I have already imagined and projected <clears throat> the happiness in the pasta. I have repeated a couple of times in my mind. So the third step, the desire. Desire to have the pasta. See that? How clearly we understand this process. So now we have a desire. And now, desire to fulfill, <clears throat> now desire to fulfill. So you go to the restaurant in the past, you had eaten the pasta, you were very happy. 
but today you go there and you are unhappy. Uh, today's it is not so tasty. So I accumulated impressions. So I wanted to fulfill my desire of projected happiness, but it is not fulfilled. I have a pain. I didn't like it. So the desire has every possibility. Two possibilities are main. It is either fulfilled or it is not fulfilled. So when it is fulfilled, I experience the pleasure. When it is not fulfilled, I am hesitated. Some sense of hesitation or stress lives in my mind. So there are the three factors now. Desire, fulfilled, hesitation and stress, not fulfilled, uh, no, fulfilled pleasure, not fulfilled, hesitation and stress. So these three factors causes the delusion in the mind. And the mind continues to run after the delusion throughout the life. I'm not talking only of the past. Though. My mind acquires these habits. I'm married to be happy, but examine first. Does the happiness is present in the marriage? Oh, that is why you did not marry. That is why you are stressed. I'm not talking of that. You have to understand it clearly. The happiness in the marriage is imagined. Divorce in the happiness is imagined and projected. <clears throat> So once projected, then I have a desire. Desire fulfilled, pleasure, some short-term pleasure. Desire unfulfilled, lot of pain and hesitation and stress. And all the three factors causes the delusion in the mind. And we continue to live in the delusion every day when you wake up in the morning. <clears throat> So these, they, these desire plus the delusion, all the four factors, what happens? Four factors gives you the difference in pure states of the mind. What are the impure states of the mind? I've already told you, money mind, monkey mind, sheep mind, strong likes and dislikes mind, mood swing, hatred mind, angry and stressed mind. Now, how many times you have those impure states of the mind today? At your location, it is 8 p.m. Find out. <coughs> mood swing, mood upset, angry and hesitated. I don't show the anger, but uh, anger is burning inside me. I'm frustrated, frustrated mind. Can you think how much the mind is impure every day? How much? How many times and how much? Mood swing, frustrated mind, anxiety and anger mind, strong likes and dislikes mind, hatred mind, hmm? money mind, sheep mind, biased mind. You know, sometimes your two friends meet and you start criticizing someone unnecessarily. <laughs> do you do it or not? I know it. You need not to tell me. <clears throat> so now, did you understand the entire process of the impurity of the mind? That impure mind manifests in the form of these different states of the mind, and we are not aware of those tendencies. That is already a storehouse in my mind. So when we talk of the purity of the mind, we have to remove those tendencies. That storehouse of the memory. Because if I don't remove the root cause, nothing is going to happen. Then I say, you go to a class of anger management and you become more angry. Anger management doesn't work that. Now we have a lot of sessions. You have already heard it. Stress management. You manage the stress, but the stress continues to live in you. 
That is why they say stress management. That is why they say anger management. Tell me if it, I'm not true. <laughs> Think of this. Eastern wisdom is very deep psychology. Very, very deep. <clears throat> I'll repeat. Tendencies, first factor. Sankalpa, imagine peace and Imagine peace or pain, second factor. It results into desire. And desire, fulfilled or unfulfilled, causes the delusion. Now, because of this delusion, uh, now I don't know what causes the impurity of the mind, but I know I am stressed, I have a mood swing, I am upset, I am biased, I have a strong, but I don't know the root cause. Did you get it? I don't know the root cause. So the master says, this is the journey. This is the journey. Past impression tendencies, which is we say it's, it's a notion. We say it is vasanas, are present in the mind due to our current and the past life. It may have come from the past life. We will talk about the past life later. <clears throat> Can we deny can we deny the negative emotions present in the mind? At present, we may we will be smiling, but we cannot deny it. And if I don't remove these impressions, you may do anger management, stress management, do anything. It is not going to. But what then? It further. The problem is further aggravated by imagined pain and the pleasure. My mind creates an imagined pain and the pleasure, sorrow and the happiness with reference to the person, object, and lot of other stuff. Clear the second step and the third step, then comes the desire. And that desire, because now I have imagined that this object contains peace and happiness. And my mind is repeating again and again, unconsciously, habitually, and impulsively. So what will what is the, will be the result? Desire. Desire to have this. I am lonely. I am very sad, very lonely. Oh, let us get married. So you see, first imagine loneliness and then get married. What happens after marriage, I need not to tell you. <laughs> but if you say, that is why I'm not getting married. So you already have a lot of tendencies. You have to be very clear. So desire it demands an effort and desire fulfilled. Then what happens? Then it gives you to the impure states of the mind. And I have already told you that we live in these tests, money mind, obsession with the material wealth and possession. Why that obsession has come? It has come because of the imagined and projected happiness. Think, monkey mind. Why the monkey mind? I have 10 thoughts and every thought says, here is the peace. I'm confused. I'm confused. And then we have a monkey, a monkey mind we have done. Sheep mind. No, no, I believe blindly following others without independent thinking. <clears throat> Strong likes and dislikes mind, which is very much clear. <laughs> upset mind. Unnecessary, I'm upset. Upset mind is only because of the imagined, projected peace and a peace or sorrow, and that comes from the tendencies. Otherwise, I need I have no reason to get upset. Anger and anxiety mind. Fear and fear mind. Yes, I did not talk about the fear mind. Fear mind also belongs to this category, mood swing mind. Oh, see that. This is what happens in our life at a very subtler level. 
I only know I have a stress. I only know I am upset. And then what happens? I say I'm upset because of you. So I blame, give responsibility to the others. I don't look inside those tendencies, those storefronts. Are you getting it? No one in the world can make you upset if the mind is pure. There is no reason. And if anyone makes you upset, he or she has the remote control. And if he or she has the remote control, it means then you are not a human being. I'm sorry to say. My mind is not able to control myself and then I shoulder the responsibility to the others. And then another problem comes. I have imagined you are responsible to make me upset. That is also an imagination and projection. And that creates further impression. And that is how we live our life. Keep on living a life like that. So who, who, nobody is going to take care of you. Even those who pay sympathy, they say that they are taking care of you. No, you have to take care of yourself. You have to understand yourself. Eastern wisdom says you have to understand yourself. So you have understood what is this impure states of the mind. So let us also understand what is the pure state of the mind so that we can do the distinction and then we should know how to achieve that. Pure state of the mind. Always it has a sense of kindness. It has a sense of calmness, peace. It has, it lives in a little bit of higher awareness. What do you mean by higher awareness? Here is the higher awareness. You still have those tendencies, but they do not impact you. You instantly pick up tendencies, no more desire, no more imagination. You live into higher awareness. You, you are calm in every situation. You are relaxed in every situation. Means the outer world does not have any impact on your mind. Purifying mind. <clears throat> the intellect has a power of discernment. It's always working. 24 by 7. It has the power of dispassion. It has the right knowledge. It has the right thought. It has the right action. You have a level of compassion. You know, we, we talk about practice compassion. No. You purify the mind. The compassion is natural. Kindness is natural. You need not to practice. How can you practice compassion in the presence of impurity of the mind? Compassion, dispassion, discernment, clarity in thought, speech, and action. Calmness is there. That calmness cannot be disturbed even. You are in the process of purifying the mind and you have reached to a state where you have realized that calmness and the joy is inside me. And still you, are, you have a lot of impurities in the mind, but they, they cannot disturb you. Why? You have a power of discernment. That is what our great masters have reached to that state. And then they find out the reason. And then they said, this is the way to work on. A purified state of the mind naturally moves to the right thought, right speech, right action. Because they instantly filter out, imagine pain, pressure, happiness, joy, projected peace and happiness. They immediately get out of it. Instantly, just they become aware. No, not required. So now see, mind is pure. Now you think, speak, and act rightly in every situation. 
So when you are thinking, speaking and acting in a right, in a right manner, will you able to destroy your relationship with anyone, including your honey, for example? You are mindful of your thought, of your speech, of your action, that how you interact in the world outside, because it is the purity of the mind. Our most problems comes from relationship to the world, whether it is an object or a person or a, or a relationship. You don't have that strong likes and dislikes. And you talk to the person with the right thought, speech, and action. Think that purity of the mind. And if you are if you have if you are expressing thought, speech, and action with the impurity of the mind, there is always a problem that we have already understand. And the personal life, professional life, social life. Are you clear? Purified, pure mind is characterized by the kindness, peace, calmness, aspiration for real self-knowledge, compassion, dispassion, clarity in thought, speech, and action. Unless we reach to that pure, purified state of the mind, we cannot find real self. Very clear. In... Uh, in the journey of the East and West. Now see the other way around. If I have purified the mind, it naturally leads to the right thought, right speech, and right action. I think last month I met this woman. She is a wonderful teacher, no doubt. But her habit of criticizing, blaming, and complaining is so much ingrained in her mind, and she is not aware of it. She met me. My honey is taking me to a vacation in somewhere in Europe. I'm not telling which is the country. Otherwise, if she listens to this talk, she will say, okay, you are this guy is complaining about me. Very good. And then she started complaining, criticizing, reacting about her husband. And you're talking before me. I didn't say anything. I said, very good. I diverted the talk. I said, you know, what, where, which country you are going or which place you are going at, what you will do. I changed the topic. So the other guy who listens to her will get an impression. Look at this, you know. Her honey is taking to vacation and uh, she is so much blaming, complaining and reacting. It means it is better to keep a distance. So what the way we think and speak and talk to the people from the purified state of the mind, it has a tremendous impact on the others that we don't recognize, that we don't realize. So you have to examine all your close friends and why? If those friends are supporting your impure mind, it is better to keep a distance with those friends. <laughs> they may be very, you say, oh, they are my very good friends. Why? They listen to everything. They agree to your blame and complain and reaction. They agree to your imagined peace and happiness from the world outside. They are not your friends. They are your foes. But you need to be, you need to dare to take that right step. If you don't take the right step, 
uh, you, we will continue to live the life of the same thing, you know. <laughs> Think. I'm not saying if there is anything wrong, you can question me. These are such a stepwise process that we cannot, we cannot get rid of this. Projected or imagined happiness or suffering creates desires for the world to attain it. Impure mind. So should I not buy a car? Should I not buy a clothes? No, you should buy it. Don't, don't put the imagined happiness there, projected happiness. So when you don't put the projected and imagined happiness, now your mind comes to the need. I need it for my professional work. I need a car. Go for it. It's okay. So the need becomes the binding desire because of imagined peace and happiness or sorrow because of the different states of the mind and the world. And that is how our personality is developed. <clears throat> and then we live continuously Continuously in, uh, in money mind, in sheep mind, in monkey mind, uh, in rationalized, rationalizing mind. What is rationalize? No, I know that pasta is very good. I don't understand you have gone to the same restaurant or different restaurant. Did you order the same thing? I rationalize unnecessarily. Everything is possible. I rationalize without any reason. And that causes a mood swing. That causes the anxiety in me. Huh? Cognitive biased mind. I have a biased opinion about others. What I have to do with it? But still I have a bias. Because there is nothing to talk about. There is nothing to talk about the Eastern wisdom. I have a lot of things to talk about the world. So that further creates an impression and it is storehouse tendencies. They are already ready to manifest in the Sankalpa. Stressed and angry mind, likes and dislikes mind I disclose. You can create more minds. Ah, mood swing mind. Do you remember that you have a particular specific mind? No, no, don't tell me. You think in your depressed mind. You can think of your grandiose mind. Oh, I have achieved this thing. Oh, really? You have achieved this thing. That we will talk in our next session. So understand, think, contemplate, and reflect. Make a list. Make a list that, oh, I have a stressed mind, I have an angry mind, I have a mood swing mind, I have an emotional mind, etc., etc., etc. And you will make a list. Why you make a list so that you can contemplate and reflect on it? Why you need to reflect on it so that your intellect must be very clear. It is the impure states of the mind. And then we will see what steps to be taken uh, to purify this mind. Close your eyes. Let us close your eyes. We will do. Eyes are closed. Find out the right place, position in the posture. First, the place of the body. And so become aware of the space all around your body. We are putting the, we are placing the body in a space. If there is no space, body cannot exist. So I have to connect myself to the to the space outside, the place outside, the very place where I am, and the position of the body. And then we become comfortable 
be comfortable looking at the neck joint, be there, feel the sensation, comfort and steadiness. Pay attention. Move the mind on the shoulder joint. Look deep inside the shoulder joint. Find out the root of the joint. So you are engaging the mind consciously to move within. That is the beginning of purification of the mind. Because that mind starts dropping, imagined and projected pain and the pleasure from the world outside. It is imagined. It is projected. So that is why we move the, move the mind on the hip joint to go to the root of the hip joint. Be there, feel sensation, comfort and steadiness. Move the mind or look the entire body from the top of the head to the toes. You are looking, in, you are looking at the body, it means mind is not looking outside to the world. and experience the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. That is how the first step, I have discussed many a times how you are be being comfortable. And the second point is also being carefree. Many of you have received this instruction very deeply. So I gave a couple of metaphors that you are uh, the, the traffic is on the road and you are watching the traffic from a distance. You are watching the mental traffic from a distance. From a distance means you already know, you are aware that these thoughts and feelings and emotions are separate from me. Let any thought come. Let any thought go. It is just a traffic. It's a highway. No, but some of these parts stuck. No, they do not stuck. They just stuck because of the imagined pleasure and pain. There is no other reason why the thought should remain stuck in my mind. How many times your thought, feeling, and emotion stuck? Can you imagine how much the mind is impure? Can you imagine the, how those impure states of the mind is manifesting in your daily life? But at the same time, at the same time, we allow the thought to come, to stay, to go, to leave it. We are not, we see the thoughts and feeling at a distance. But in the very beginning, it doesn't work that way. So that is why we have a breathing plus mantra practice. So what is that practice? You look inside the forehead in the space or emptiness or blankness. So when you see the space, there you start dropping shantoham, shantoham, shantoham. And that shantoham continues and in that continuity of the shantoham and the steadiness in the body, you start breathing quick and short breath through the ribs. Mind will resist impurity, tendencies. So what do you do with the resistance? Endure it. Keep on doing it. No, no, I will, I will do it. I have to purify the mind. Intellect has to work all the time. <clears throat> Continue breathing. Continue breathing. So the, does uh, this breathing, shantoham, stillness in the body, all the three will help me to purify the mind? Yes. I don't see any connection. Continue doing it. Never forget to do the practice daily in the morning and evening, and then you will recognize it. And I will explain it. How the masters have found that this purifies the mind. So if there is any resistance to the breathing, you endure it. Endurance means what? The intellect says, no, I will continue to do it. I will not leave it. 
even if there is a stiff resistance. You'll be surprised if you endure it. The next experience is the joy of doing it. Mm. Oh, I'll find the joy of doing it, yes. Only in the beginning we have a lot of challenges. <clears throat> continue breathing, continue saying Shantoham deep inside the forehead in the space and continue to maintain the steadiness in the body. Continue breathing. Normally, this breathing practice has to be done for nine minutes. And today we have done for three minutes. Stop the breathing, do nothing. Experience the changes in the sensation, my friend. Experience the changes in the sensation. And we continue. Now we have a subtle level of purification. Understand it clearly by the mantra. We go for the mantra chanting, Asatoma Satagamaya. You can say in your mind or loudly, Asatoma Satagamaya. <clears throat> Meaning, moving from the false to the real. Now, suddenly, the thought pops up in your mind about the likes and dislikes. The next moment, the intellect recognizes. Oh, it is because of, it is the impure state of the mind. So you don't entertain those thoughts. That is the meaning you are moving from the false to the real. Real is yet to be achieved, but at least you have taken the big step. So what is the knowledge behind it? What is false? So I recognize what is false. False means whatever is changing. Just pick up only one thing. It is whatever is changing. It has a beginning. It has an end. Every stress has a beginning and every stress has an end. Every pleasure has a beginning. Every pleasure has an end. Every pain has a beginning. Every pain has an end. That is the meaning that, okay, I recognized it. Pain is there, it has an end. So I, I do not entertain it. When I do not entertain it, my mind moves to the purification. A lot of stuff to be absorbed completely. <clears throat> Now, looking, moving the mind on the head and the neck. Now, again, we move to the passive step. You move the mind on the head and the neck, or you allow the mind to touch the skin of the head and the neck. Why I say so? The mind goes deeper. And the moment mind goes deeper inside, it experiences the sensation relaxation and stillness. It continues to stay within. When it continues to stay within, consciously, first time it recognizes the journey is so easy. The mind is constantly moving outside because of those impure states of the mind. Otherwise, there is no reason. 
So we have dropped all the reasons and we experience the sensation, relaxation and stillness. Moving the mind on the right arm from the shoulder to the fingertips and experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. You may experience tingling sensation, numbness there. And if you feel that, obviously the mind has gone deeper within. Move the mind on the left arm. Feel the sensation, comfort and steadiness. Sensation, relaxation and stillness. So that is why one master have defined the relaxation means, relaxation in Eastern wisdom means Gathering the mind that is scattered in different directions within. And there is no reason I cannot be relaxed and calm. Moving the mind on the chest and the belly. Sensation, relaxation and stillness. Moving the mind on the right leg. Sensation, relaxation and stillness. Moving the mind on the left leg. Sensation, relaxation and stillness. Moving the mind on the entire body from the top of the head to the toes. What we are doing by this step, we are asking the mind, please continue to live with it. Don't start jumping on an object or a person or a relationship outside. Why? Because it comes with the imagined and projected pain or pleasure. Then what? Then it creates the impure states of the mind. Now you see why I give you these steps. So when you do this practice while listening to the basics and the reasons, you will rise in awareness. What is that rise in awareness? You will enter into a power of discernment. What is that discernment has to do? You enter into the pure state of the mind. Well, be aware of the entire body from the top of the head to the toes and experience the sensation, relaxation and stillness and in that state, when the mind is living within, it is very easy for the mind is living within to look at the breath going in, seshantoham, on the breath going in, when the seshantoham on the breath coming out. So every time you are dropping shantoham on the breath means I am the peace and your mind seems to get absorbed into the inner space and that absorption is required. Why it gets absorbed? Because it realizes that mind goes outside with an imagined peace and happiness. I'm not going there. You have a clarity. Then there is another, but we have trillions of tendencies. No doubt we all have it, including me. So, so any tendencies convert into a thought, feeling, and emotion. What should I do? You superimpose, shantoham, as if you are ignoring that, avoiding that. You're not creating a reaction, what to do. Oh, that pasta is very, oh, shantoham. My honey did this thing, shantoham. 
Oh, some incident happened, Shantu. Means you want the mind should continue to flow with the Shantuham, being aware of the space. This step is educating. It seems very simple, but here is a challenge. It is a challenge to the mind to educate it. And once we educate, educate sometime, we have a deeper experience. You know, the mind goes very deep. It touches the real self. And that's where we experience the calmness and the peace and the joy. That is how you share the experiences. But until this impurity is removed, we cannot live into that state 24 by 7. Continue, Shantoham. 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 When there is no thought, you, are, you drop the Shantoham on the breath going in and out. If there is a thought, you superimpose Shantoham on that thought. Oh, my honey did this thing, Shantoham. My honey did very good thing, Shantoham. My honey did very bad thing, Shantoham. Means you are erasing the impressions of strong likes and dislikes. In turn, imagine projected happiness or pain. Why? I have to purify the mind. Then only we can live into higher awareness. Shanti 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 You know, Om is the name of the pure consciousness or the real self. And we do it Shanti 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 three times. One for the physical level, other for the subtle mental level, third for the spiritual level. Spiritual consciousness is the real self. It is of the nature of peace and happiness. Mind, no. Body, no. World outside, no. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Bring your four seven zero six three. Bring your awareness on the right hand. Your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both the palms. Place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences, bring the hands down. We'll share our experiences now. How are you, Sophie? Thank you, Girish. I'm good. I didn't fall asleep. Very good. Uh, my mind took a little steps towards wandering here and there, but I brought it back. So Yes, that yes, is also good. That is good. That is good. Definitely that is good. Very good practice. Ah, it comes by when we have a clear understanding. Practice is also good. How are you meet? I remember back to the beginning of my time with, with you and everyone else. Two or two, more than two years ago, I think now with that idea of watching the traffic. Yeah. And tonight I sensed more good. my dependency on sources outside myself or feeling good about myself. 
Yes. And I just feel like I dropped to a, a new level, came to a new level of very understanding. Good. Yeah, very good understanding because dip, oh. and you rightly use the word dependency on those thought, feeling, and emotions. And now I feel a sense of independence. Yes. That is very good. That's definitely a good step ahead. How are you, John? Hey, Girish. We have heavy winds here, and those heavy winds are annoying me. And so... Very good. <laughs> and so this is one of those kinds of sessions. I'll try tomorrow. Fire station annoys you. <laughs> Wind annoys <laughs> you. I have annoyed mind. And uh, I will not add other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is even the understanding that this annoyance is the impure state of the mind caused by the imagined projection. That once I have to repeat it in your mind, reflect on it, and then it takes you to the different level. How are you, Charlie? Hi, sorry, I turned the camera off and I don't know how to turn it back on again. Um, I feel very calm. Um, I noticed since uh, the last week that agitation that you, you'd um, addressed in, very kindly in the last session it was constant and it was like my mind was thrown up everything it could think of to keep me in a state of agitation so um especially today even though i've been listening to you know your talks all week i, I dropped into a calmer place and i felt it again tonight and um i'm very aware that i've got every mind going and then some but um i don't know just felt calm which uh, is great yes yes you are moving ahead now realize that hesitation is because of the tendencies which is which is in the form of trillions of impressions in the storehouse of our mind that we are not aware we are only aware of the hesitation at the manifest level right. that causes the lot of challenges so the more contemplation and reflection one day what will happen you will be independent from the hesitation that is an imagined and projected factor coming from the mind very good that is all for today thank you very much namaste we will meet again next week